Um, he loves golf, and it's oh, there he is. There he is. Oh my god! Oh, you've got a shirt on. Finally, huh? I mean, every night I, I'm watching you strum your guitar. You've got no shirt on. Come on. I mean, I've got nowhere to go, Claude, to be honest. So I don't really care what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy for me, and I travel a lot. For somebody like you, how crazy is this, you being stuck in one place like this? Oh, it's nuts. I've even started wearing golf clothes. <laughs> Just to make me feel like I might be anywhere near a course. Um, yeah, it's nuts. I mean, you, you know, you know, you know it well yourself. But I would have been on tour right now. I would have. Actually I know. Come, you would have been probably coming to my show the other night in Florida if you want. Absolutely, wanted. we um, would have been all over it. Of course, um, but yeah, it's just it's a strange one. Now I'm just between the four walls of my apartment in London and going for a run when I can and working out in my balcony and. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just strange, isn't it? It's just a, it's an odd one that we'll never see again. But listen, you got to take take advantage of it in whatever ways you can. I think in a lot of ways, for someone like you, also you never get to stay in one place, so it can somewhat be a blessing. I know, in talking to some of the tour players, they're like, "Listen, it's, we want to get out and do stuff, but it's also been fun to be home." Yeah, exactly. We we don't really get to spend a lot of time at home. And I was just saying the other day that this is probably this is definitely the longest period of time that I've spent in one place in maybe 10 years. Um, you know, even during time off, there's always something to come up, you know, whether it be, I'd have to go to, you know, uh, America for a meeting or uh, of some sort and then bounce back, you know, it's still a, a flight or whatever. So this is definitely the longest period I've spent at home. I've got a six, my 16 year old daughter's at school doing uh, homework online, but she still has the Nile poster up. Yes, of course. The, the old school Nile poster when you had the bleach blonde hair. Oh, please, Todd, stop, stop. <laughs> and, a ter and a terrible golf swing to match. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, um, I remember, I think the first time I met you was 2015 at Augusta. when I think you were still back in one direction and had my picture taken and was a hero in my house for uh, my young daughter. But I remember you walking around Augusta National and you can obviously you can't have any phones there and, there's no autographs. And I remember thinking, watching you walk, you're walking from the clubhouse down the 18th hole. I said, hi, and you walk on. And I remember thinking, this is probably the only place in the world where you can somewhat be normal. Has golf been a thing for you that has been a kind of an escape and a place there is somewhat normality in your crazy life? Yeah, 100%. Um, that's how I really got into it. I played a lot when I was a kid. Um, you know, because I grew up in a small town, there's a golf course there. It's a very Irish thing to play golf, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, we played a lot of golf when we were kids. Sometimes we would play like 36 holes a day. And then I kind of, after the, the band formed, I kind of didn't get to play for a while. And then we would go on tour and, you know, there was everywhere we went, there was a lot of press attention and um, just attention in general around the hotel. And we would sneak out and go and, you know, rent some clubs somewhere and, and play, a couple of us, you know, myself and uh, Harry, Harry's a golfer as well. So we did Is he any good? Years. He, I, I'm not sure what he's like. Now, I haven't played him with him in a couple of years, but uh, he was all right. He was getting there. Yeah. We were both about, you know, 15, 14, 15 handicappers. I'd say I've dropped a few shots then. I'm not sure if he has, but um, yeah, we would just find that as a good release and get in behind the gates of a golf club somewhere. And then no one really knows where you are. And before you know it, you're, you're obsessed with it. I've got this great image of you and Harry Styles playing golf with rental sets and bad golf clothes. Did you dress up and try and disguise yourself in bad golf clothes? Uh, just, I'm still wearing bad golf clothes sometimes. <laughs> um, but no, we would, yeah, we would just do our best to keep our heads down. It's quite hard. You know, you've got like, you got parents, you know, who want us to meet their kids. And by the time the round is finished, then there's like loads of kids at the clubhouse as we come up 18 and... Yeah, it was, that's when it was a bit strange. But uh, yeah, listen, well, that's what we, that's how we get into it, really. And now you're, uh, you're when you go on tour, do you take your golf clubs with you now? Oh, I mean, I turn up to the airport. I look like I'm a musician, a golfer. <laughs> uh, I look like I'm going away for months because I've got like my gym gear, my golf gear, my normal clothes, my guitar in this hand, my golf clubs in, and it's travel bag on that side. So yeah, I, they go everywhere. When's the last time you got to play golf? As I arrived back in the UK about over a month ago, probably five weeks ago now, um, just 
they were just about, I remember Trump came on TV and said that he was going to, they were going to close off European travel. And then that's when I left America and came back. Um, and the day after I landed, golf courses were still open. So I literally got, I think I got the last day in before they literally said, even golf, you can't social distance with. Um, yeah, and I played, well, I'm a member at Wentworth and went down to play a bit down there. And I was terrible because I hadn't played in a while. But um, yeah, I miss it. Terribly. But you've been making any swings in the house? Yeah, of course. I'm standing in the mirror, you know. I've got I've got your old man in my head telling me to open up my <laughs> le- telling me to open up my left foot. <laughs> um but yeah, I got a I got a, a perfect putt. Um I see the the boys have DJ and I yeah, see yeah. a few of the boys have the perfect putting thing and I've been kinda of knocking out knocking a few putts there and did a bit of chipping across my carpet and I mean you a, a baller stuff. a baller like you, you haven't put a simulator in the house yet? No room for it, man. I tried to. Ma- <laughs> I actually, you know what? I tried to put a similar in one of the rooms, but um, they said that the ceilings were too low. So, I mean, I've got to think if, if I mean, if you buy a big LA mansion up in the Hollywood Hills, first thing you're doing is putting in that launch monitor simulator of all the stuff. I mean, that could be next back in LA. <laughs> when you were in LA, you play. Uh, you remember at Lakeside? Yeah, just was just joining just before I left. Um, I love it there. Great spot. That place is um, so good. I think my da- my dad's two younger brothers both were uh, assistants there back in the day. And I think my godfather, John, ha- I think his name was John Hayes. He was the head pro. I think he was my godfather. I think he was the head pro there. No way. Yeah, back in so the like in the fifties and the sixties. Are your family Californian? Yeah, I was born in Palm Springs. Oh, that's right, yeah. I was born okay, in Palm okay, Springs. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm a native Southern Californian. Yeah, a shocker, dude. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, that's amazing. Yeah, I love Lakeside. Great, great group of people. Um, great bunch of guys. Um, and just like the course is always in phenomenal shape. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, it's in a good spot. And I don't live too far from it, so it's great. So why golf? I mean, what was it about golf as a young kid that, that made you? Was it just because you were in an area and everybody else played? But what did you love about the sports and what do you still love about it? I guess I was lucky. You know, my, my dad's a huge sports fan, big soccer player. Um, didn't play a lot of golf himself. Loves like He just loves a lot of sports. Didn't play lots of them, but loves a lot of sports and is quite knowledgeable generally. General knowledge and sports. He gets, he's got one of those like facts that guys. And we would sit and, and just watch European tour golf. And when I, was, I remember when I was a kid, like Tiger was just making his, you know, I was 10, 11, 12 when Tiger was in his prime. Um, and, you know, winning all, you know, when he was 2002, three, you know, that, that when he was just at his best and beating everyone and no one had a chance. Um, that's when I started watching it. And my dad would bring me to the European Open at the K Club every year. And yeah, it was just a... Yeah, we just it was one of those sports where we were like my dad was a football, a soccer fanatic as we say in the states, uh, soccer fanatic, and he would go we would go to games all the time. But our our other sport to watch and and have a knock about with was uh, was golf, and yeah, just I mean it was hard not to like golf when Tiger is. I mean every you look at the world's top ten right now, I'd say they're all from my generation, and we're all they're all they all play the game because of Tiger, and I'm sure they'd say that you know JT, Ricky, any of them. How much did you fanboy Tiger when you met him for the first I'm not time? Gonna, I'm not going to lie, my heart was pounding. I was on the, <laughs> I was on the range in Augusta uh, it was just before I caddied for Rory in the par three. And, and Rory goes to me, have you met Tiger yet? I said, no, no. <laughs> I, you know, and I, I know, I know, I've known Rory for a long time at this point and, you know, realized that the caliber of golfer that Rory is. But, you know, I'm sure when Rory met Tiger for the first time, he was a bit taken aback. But he, uh, he said, have you met Tiger yet? I said, no, no, I haven't actually. And then uh, he brought me over and I pretended that I was really calm and, you know, you know, play, <laughs> do you, do you, you know the usual golf range chat. How are you? Hope you're well. Yeah, yeah. yeah play, play well this week. Yeah, you know? have a good week. Yeah, have a good week, that kind of stuff. And then just kind of walked off. But um, I've met him a few times since, but the first time I met him, I don't particularly get like starstruck by singers or actors or anyone in kind of arts because I think we've got that common thing. Yeah, of course. You know, you find I found like I did I when I had knee knee surgery, um, I did my rehab at Chelsea Chelsea Football Club's training ground for five months. The day I walked in there, I thought it was Christmas, because they all want to be they all want pictures of me because I'm a singer and I want the pictures of them because they're like professional. Absolutely. 
sports guys have always gotten me um and tiger is in my eyes the number one so um yeah i was taken aback by that big time if you could trade places and be tiger woods or rory McIlroy or justin rose or keep who you are would you trade places and be like a great <laughs> golfer and win major championships oh because i'm guessing your life is pretty good i mean uh, th- I've been very, I'm one of the lucky ones, you know, that in terms of the success that we've had over the years and I continue to have, I'm one of the lucky ones, but God, I would love to stick on a green, <laughs> I, would, I would love to put on a green jacket and I actually was watching you talk to someone about it the other day, I don't know what it was, I think it might have been a recap on Sky Sports where you right. were talking about the first time you went oh, to Oh yeah, Augusta, when I went Augusta, to, um, went to Augusta, the Masters. Yeah. Sebi was there and like Byron, all the old school guys were there. I was just like, Sebi had the sweater over the shoulders, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. He had on like blue pants and like a white shirt, like a gray sweater. And he walked in and he said, hello, my name is Sebi. And he had the <laughs> sweater. I'm like, you are the coolest person on the planet. I mean, I would have absolutely loved that. But it was lovely to hear even you talk about that. A man who spends so much time around golf, works and coaches the best, some of the best players in the world in, um, and some of the boys that we've mentioned and yeah, they hear that you talking about that because you're, you come from a golfing fa- family and it's been yeah, you, took a, you took a lesson from my old man, didn't you? I've taken a few lessons off yourself. I've taken a few yeah. lessons off your dad. Uh, yeah, I know. He gave me a, we were on the Ryder Cup Hazel team, was it? Yeah, Hazel team. That's right. Yeah. And I was, I remember, being on the, I remember being on the range and then someone came over to talk to me or like someone like was moved their like tray of balls closer to mine or something. I kind of looked up a little bit. And I just had a look around and I had DJ here, uh, Rick, <laughs> Ricky there, and then Jordan two down. And your dad came over and you guys were all chatting to them. And then your dad gave me a bit of a lesson. And uh, to be fair, that's one of the main things that I obviously still do. And all, all I mean, if you take, if you get a pointer from Claude Harmon uh, or from uh, Butch, you're going you're gonna to take it. And Claude, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got, the, uh, you've got the Augusta National Jumper. I mean, you really have become like a, a, you know, a part of, you know, what Augusta is every year. You're a big part of, you've become a big part of the dry chip putt, the Augusta Women's National, or the, the amateur that played in. It's got to be cool for you to, to see all these young kids because their reaction for you in a golf setting must just be amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. And, and obviously watching Augusta my whole life and watching the Masters, just I can't believe it. I, I think this year was going to be my, my like sixth or seventh year in a row. It still blows my mind that I can say that I've walked through those gates or driven through those gates or even hit a ball there. It's just um, it's madness. So, uh, you know, spending the time that I, I do there, they've you know really taken me under their wing and got me involved in some of the initiatives. Uh, as you say, I tried chip and putt and, and things like that. And, it was just, um, it's really cool to, to, you know, you turn up to a golf range to surprise some of these kids that they react like that to you. And, and, you know, and I'm like taken aback by their quality and like how good a seven-year-old swing from Arkansas is, you know, and he's like, or, you know, and she's just like, you know. How did that whole thing, how did they come to you and and kind of ask you to start being involved and and become a part of what they're doing? Well, they're kind of, the first year, I'd I'd come and I'd I'd uh, I don't know how like, I think they'd kind of heard I was coming because obviously you have to go through a member and, and things like that. And they'd heard the the social guys had heard the social media guys had heard that I was coming. So I did a couple of little like ma- at, at, like at the masters on Instagram or something little stories, right. and then got chatting to a couple of people there behind the scenes, the marketing people, and then. They were asking me what I thought about certain little bits and pieces that they do. And then, you know, we were coming up with ideas and and things like that. And just like slowly but surely. But I guess, you know, at the time, I, 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 you know, I was probably the perfect person for them, really. You know, Absolutely. I was, I was, you know, in the band and, uh, you know, they were, were, were always looking to grow the game. And I mean, you know, if we can do it at Augusta National, then I'm in. How many times <laughs> have you gotten to play? Oh, I feel like I feel so horrible when I say this. I've played it on maybe five occasions, five or six occasions. Um, my grandfather won the tournament. My my actual name, his name is on the trophy, and I've never played. No, that's I've I never played. Worse. I feel even worse. <laughs> that makes me feel terrible. Um, what's no, the I, best? Um, what's the best score you've ever shot? Oh, I was 
absolutely flying. I was I was probably having one of the rounds of my life. Um, I was on for I was on for seventy nine and double bogey eighteen, stuck it into the trees on the right. Um, and seventy nine would have been an absolute dream around there. To be honest, I'll take it. I'll take eighty one because I got nowhere near there. It took a bit of experience. You need to know where to put the ball. Um, but but I mean, seventy nine was going to be my probably one of my best rounds of all time. And to do it at Augusta wouldn't have been too bad. But uh, yeah, I just I, I just I still like when I go there now. It still like gives me goosebumps and like. The, the things you notice about it that you didn't notice about it on TV that everyone talks about, you know, the undulation and uh, how it looks like the grass is cut with a scissors because it probably is. And, you know, things like that, they'd never get old. It's the only place that I've been. Um, I just, it, just even anything, you know, t- tourist attraction or a golf course or anything that I can say that just continues to blow my mind every time I go. And um, I feel very lucky. Yeah, you you and Justin Rose have your foundation. You guys have raised, what, like two... $2 million all going to charity. I mean, that's, I mean, I think that's why people see you as being a part of the game because you're actually giving back to the game. You're using the game of golf to try and, you know, help people. You and Justin Rose are really good friends. Um, how'd that happen? Yeah, we got, we got some mutual friends in, in Mark Mack and Paul yeah, Mack, right. as you know. Um, and um, yeah, and we just, I, that's how I got to know Justin through those guys. And then, Myself and Justin became really good friends as well, and we go away and hol- on vacation together and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's just—I mean, you've met him. He's one of the nicest guys there yeah, is. Yeah, Rosie's the best. Um, I don't know many people that can say a bad word about him. He's just so solid, well-rounded, funny, generous, smiling his face all the time, um, and an unbelievable golfer. Um, that goes along with it, and yeah, you know, we just—we decided that like. You know, I know he and he and his wife Kate. They do. They have the Kate and Justin Rose Foundation, and they look after um, a charity in in, uh, in Florida there beside you. Um, and yeah, we were just like, maybe we could do something together in the, in you know in the UK. You know, and pull in some of the contacts that we know and try and raise as much money as we can with some great auction prizes, and you know, have our little foundation, the Horn and Rose, and um, yeah, we and we've used that. We do it. We do it biannually, so every two years, and and. We do it. We do a, a night, you know, being like quite. It's the most relaxed of those kinds of nights, you know. It's like summer suits, and there's. I performed one year, and a friend of mine, Ollie Moore's, performed the next year, and yeah, we put on some really great prizes based on the contacts that we have, and yeah, we've raised over the two nights, we've raised two million dollars, which is or two million pounds, I should say, which is uh, which is pretty sweet, and yeah, it's just mad how you know you you meet someone who happens to play golf and then golf kind of does a full circle and yeah, we have a golf day the next day and yeah, it's just, it's a really cool thing that we get to do and it's uh, supposedly happened this year, you know, um, again this year, but based on the new golf schedule, we would love to see. And you've got a golf management company. I mean, of all the things that you thought you would have when you started (laughs) out, you know, in one direction and you're going to be a superstar, did you ever think you'd have a golf management company? Probably not. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, God. Just Modest golf. golf. I mean, four years now. I mean, you guys have, I mean, yeah. it's, and it's, I think when you started it and you started getting some players, I think everybody probably thought, hey, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a passion project, but, you know, Tyrrell Hatton winning Bay Hill. I mean, come on. I mean, when I, when I started it, like, it was a hard start, obviously, um, because who's going to take some fella from a boy band series in terms of golf. <laughs> like, but I, I just, I'd like to think I've got a bit more, you know, a bit about myself. And, you know, I was willing to actually care and look after some of these young players. And we got a lot of players when they had zero ranking. And all of, nearly all of our players, bar a couple, um, had zero ranking. And, and, you know, you hear horror stories of players not knowing where they're going to play on Thursday or on a Tuesday afternoon. And, stuff like that you know I was like that's you know in my world that's like unheard of you know the flights and you know entering competitions and you know like you, you've got people to do all that yeah well, I mean we can like I could I love the game and, and uh, I want to be involved in it and some here perform so yeah we got some players and obviously you know trying to convince some young players who are being targeted by different management companies all the time why you're the best is sometimes the hardest thing to do but um we needed some the, the players that did come with us at the, at the start really believed in what we were saying to them 
and it's turned out for the best because I mean we had three European Tour wins last year and I mean and, somebody uh, Mark sent me some uh, ten wins across all tours over the last fourteen months. Yeah, it's, I mean uh, that's I mean that's crazy. crazy to get to get picture you know to follow leaderboards on televisions and and all the golf apps and see your players up there you know in some shape or form every week whether it be you know now with Leona going on to LPGA when she was winning last year and, yeah, and that was and a big tour. deal that was amazing she was yeah. you know she I think she finished fifth in the in the Smetra tour last year um we had the challenge tour wins um the three European tour wins with the boys Guido and Christian and then this year was a big one you know we we said last year myself and Mark and, and the team you know we're, we're only small there's only four or five of us and we were saying, you know, we need to, for us to be, for to go to the next level, you know, we need to get inside the top 50. It'd be great to be able to, you know, knowing who we know and blah, blah, blah. So to sign Tyrrell Hatton last summer was amazing. And Tyrrell had come off the back end of a, a bit of a weird experience with his previous management company. And, and that's... What, you what know, do you think you were able to tell him that, that kind of made him believe that yeah, going to you guys at Modest was, was the right move? Well, Tyrrell, Tyrrell's the kind of guy that... that needs a bit of love <laughs> like he you know he 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 reacts to loving and yeah you know he just needs an, an arm around i mean um deals wise here and there that's that there you know that that'll be you know if you're in the top 50 in the world you've got a fair chance of getting yourself some money you know what i mean yeah. um from some of the brands um and and that's you know but we felt like we were good we have a good there's a good family vibe within the within our our group and I don't know if you've seen last week we even did like a, a bake off it was the modest guy oh, bake off where all the play I mean I did a terrible job but um we did uh, all the players got involved and Sarah was involved there's a real family vibe there and and yeah I will if when it comes to the money side of things I'll put my 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 neck on the line for Terrell of course and. Um, and yeah, I just think he could feel the, the the family family vibe of the thing. You know, we went out for dinner and we and had a proper chat with him. And we don't we don't try and hard sell it like a business. It's more of like a you know, because I mean, at the end of the day, it comes from me. So I want yeah, it to sure. feel. I, I don't want it to feel all businessy. And golf is we're trying to make golf cool, not like corp, you know corporate and even more. Um, and I think Terrell's seen that. And um, and based on the players that we had at the time, I think he could see that as well. So. I also, that was huge. I also think if you're talking to somebody and you're talking to their parents or you're talking about, you know, what it's like to have someone look after you, given what you've been through from the start of your career to where you are now, I mean, yeah. it makes perfect sense, to, believe it or not, to listen to someone like you who, I mean, there's probably nobody more apt to talk about it based off of everything you went through when you were young and to where you are now. And that's probably the reason why I wanted to start the company. I felt like I could, even though I was the same age as a lot of the guys that I was signing, I felt like I'd been through enough and a few life experiences and worked with the corporate side of things and worked with a great management company that looked after me and I didn't have to worry about anything apart from going on stage. I felt like we had that in us, uh, myself and the two other, uh, the three other owners of Modest Golf. You know, I felt like we had that in our, like we had a social media team already. We had a travel internal travel we had right. you know th things like that that before you start a company if you want to start a golf management company they're the first things you need you need to be able to be able to tell people that, that you can get them starts that they can you can sort their travel and do their social media and straight away you've got you've got ears around it <laughs> um, absolutely because believe it or not they're some of the hardest the easiest thing they sound like the easiest things but the hardest things to achieve and they're probably some of the uh, the biggest things that you can mess up if you do them the wrong way just tell me about it. I've heard about some horror stories. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously we're on Cobra Puma's um, Instagram. Um, yeah. You've got some players, Leona McGuire, Santom, you've got a, some other players, Ben Stowe, you and Ferguson. What is it that you like about the brand? I mean, you work with a lot of brands, but um, I'm, a, I'm a Cobra Puma ambassador, but it's a cool brand. They're big into golf. They sponsor you know, the Europro. You're, you've got a bunch of players that come up through them. What do you like about their commitment to golf and, and how they're doing things? It's crazy how how um, how big it's become, um, Cobra Puma. Like watching, I guess the first one to turn the corner was was obviously with them was Ricky and yeah, Ricky. Sure. Every every young kid, if you go to a PJ Tour event, you will did see you ours. ever have one of the Ricky hats? Yeah, the orange bill. Hat of course that. you did. Uh, but I mean, every little every little boy or girl was going around PJ Tour events dressed in head to toe in orange, and uh, you know, and that was the that was the Puma 
the Puma look and the Ricky Fowler look. And I guess it's kind of taken off from there. But since I've started, started the company, they were straight in, you know, wanted to support, believed in what we were doing, that we were trying to make golf cool, if you like. And, and so were they. And when you sit and speak to the guys, even doing things like this, you know, yeah. uh, ahead of the game in some shape, in some ways. Um, and just hearing the, the passion that, the, the, you know, especially the, the two boys that run it, that run it on a daily basis, they've been unbelievable f- for us. And, uh, and, Really good, you know, you and Ben, Leon, and, you know, it's just, and, and Kim, it's just, it's, uh, and all levels of the game. It's not like they're just shooting, they're going straight in. Yeah, know, for to sure. A PJ Tour, as we say, or, uh, you know, um, this Europe, the, the, the idea for the Europe Pro, the reason we wanted to support that, I think, was brilliant. So we, basically, they have a, a Cobra, like, a Puma Cobra League within the Europe Pro, which is obviously a feeder tour to, right. to the Challenge Tour. And they they have like a mini league where they've got like, they pick 12 players at the start of the season and whoever finishes, you know, the highest in that list, you know, we, we organize a couple of starts to the challenge door. So we, we felt like, even though we didn't have to, you know, crazily associate, everyone, it's not like we're, I'm going around head to toe in, in Puma, yeah, yeah. but you know, like I felt like that was a, a really cool initiative for, of theirs. And we felt that we wanted to support that. Me and Mark, Mark from the minute they said it to us, was just like, right. This is a no-brainer. This have, is have, you ever, have you ever played a round of golf in full head-to-toe orange like Ricky Fowler? You know you have. <laughs> Absolutely you know you have. not. <laughs> Tell you what, I've, done, I've done some crazy stuff in my time, but I've never done the Ricky Fowler. <laughs> Bro- Brooks's caddy, Ricky Ellett, you know, Ricky from, yeah. from Port Rush, who's got one of the best senses of humor. Every week on tour, we'll see some 40-year-old guy who's head-to-toe in the orange hat, the orange shirt, the white belt, and the orange pants, and he'll be on the range. We'll be walking, and Ricky will say to Brooks, um, Hey, Brooks, who do you think his favorite golfer is? It's just <laughs> every single week Ricky comes out with it. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. But that's what, like, you need that. I mean, look, you know, look at other brands with different signature looks. I mean, no, no, that's you, how you, you, you definitely need it. need it. And I think the great thing about Cobra Puma, and you found this out, is I think a lot of people look at Ricky Fowler and they look at the way he dresses and they think it's just all marketing but when you look at what's actually behind the brand and you look at what's you know the golf clubs and and their commitment to being involved in the brand um you know bryson you know using the clubs now have you tried one length clubs yet that's the that's the big thing absolutely not I'm dude i've been playing i've been playing them for three years i'll never go back what i've been playing one length irons for three years i will never go back to regular irons are you joking no 100 percent. so I had, a, I had back surgery about 11 years ago and you know, when I do play golf, you know, it's not great on my body. So every time I would try and hit a longer golf club, you know, a five iron or a four, and I couldn't get them in the air and I'm always dropping back underneath it. So the fact that all of the irons are the length of a seven iron, it's, they're the easiest clubs in the world to hit. And once you actually try them, Bryson, I was talking to him like three years ago. He's like, listen, try them, go play golf with them. Tell me what you think. Give them like a real try. So I went out and I tried them. And I just took a, like a, a, we had a demo set of like graphite shafted irons and I took them and every, you know, every new set of golf clubs that, you know, Cobra comes out with, they send them to me. I put them against the ones I've been using, the one lengths on the launch monitor. And I, it's, I hit them so much better. You've got to try it. That's amazing. It's so much easier because if you think about it, when you go to the range, if you were going to hit balls, what club would you hit balls with? You're probably going to hit balls with a seven or an eight. I- then literally, you got me there, seven there. Yeah. Right. I like this. Yeah, I, I, it's my favorite sort of number, that one kind of 60. Yeah, so, and if you think about it, the longer golf clubs, a six iron, a five iron, a four iron, they're harder to get in the air because you look down and you don't see a lot of loft. You start backing up. But because the five iron is the length of a seven, you'd be surprised. Believe it or not, they're so much easier to hit. You, you got to try them out. Maybe Bryson's the one uh... – Maybe he's right. Maybe yeah. he's right. The mad, the, what do they call him? The mad scientist. The mad scientist. Um, <laughs> Great guy, by the way. I love so him. I was talking to Mark yesterday. He said, you're like, so now, obviously, with you being in management, you have got to watch a lot of golf. I know you've watched a lot of golf already, but you've got to watch college golf. You've got to watch junior golf and stuff like that. So how much golf, when you're not performing and, and doing what you do for your day job, how much golf are you actually watching? You, <laughs> you sit and watch Golf Channel, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I do. Uh, I watch a lot of it. It's such a, it's an easy watch. It's calming. There's some, obviously at the moment, it's probably the best time to watch golf because you're just getting major Sundays every every day. Um, 
last Sunday was Rory's win at, uh, at yeah. PY Island, and, the PGA Championship. Uh, and they and played uh, – last night on Sky, they played uh, Rory uh, playing uh, players. the players. Yeah. So there's a lot, there's a lot of that kind of stuff at the moment. But yeah, when I'm when I'm in the states, um, uh, golf channel is great, you know, because you yeah. get like, you get all sorts of golf, La- uh, ladies college golf, yeah. um, the ladies tour, uh, men's uh, college golf, you name it, you can watch it. I mean, in America you can watch like little league base- <coughs> baseball. <laughs> you can in terms of sports, they're all over it. Um, ESPN eight the Ocho. <laughs> so um yeah i just i watch a lot of golf yeah i'm, I'm big into it I, lo- I love american college golf i mean it's it's what a like a, a, a like a platform for some of these young guys and girls to get their starts on the pga tour you know i remember watching some of the some of the boys like let me think i remember watching the likes of a, a matthew wolf or a colin morikawa two two three years ago yeah and, have you seen matt wolf hit it in person no, I haven't. Yeah, Dude, it's so good. Not. Dude, it's, it's so good. That, that snap is brilliant. Oh, yeah. and it's the, it's the little kind of shimmy and stuff. Yeah. He played with Brooks right before the lockdown. <laughs> and, um, you know, he's a really cool kid. Um, mm. You know, he laughs a lot. And um, But, I mean, when you watch it up close, the guy hits it so far. I yeah. mean, he just hammers it. And every swing is pick. like, every swing is just flat out. Full. I mean, you live in LA. I can't believe you haven't gone down to Gigi's range and taken a lesson from him. Uh, yeah. Well, I've, tr- I've tried to get in touch with him. He's uh, he seems to be a busy man out there. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Um, he, yeah. Whatever. I I love those crazy swings. When you, I love those ones. You know, the Furix and the the ones that just didn't look like they should be right. But I mean, as Matthew Wolf has said, and you've said to me in multiple occasions, you can do what you want. It can happen. We lost, we lost it. it. Now we uh, got you. You got me. Sorry, I was just saying, like, you can do what you want in the swing once the square, once the club is square when you hit the ball. And Matt Wolf is a perfect example of that. Absolutely. Um, favorite golf courses, obviously, Augusta's got to be one of them. But what are some of your favorite golf courses that you've gotten to play? God, um, I've been lucky. I've played quite a few. Um, all right, let me go through. Uh, I mean, the experience, for experience-wise, St. Andrews. Yeah, it's pretty I mean, good. It's just like... Favourite course in Ireland? Port Rush. Yeah, it's pretty good. I absolutely loved it. Um, I, know the, I know I've been going there quite a while. Um, we know the, the head pro there. and God, it's uh, it's stunning. That view down four, down five, and, or down four, is it? Four, five, five. Down five is just um, incredible. Yeah, and I, hopefully they can get the open back there pretty soon. It'd be nice to I see. Think a, I think a lot of the players last year, I mean, I talked to like five or mm. six players saying, can we just play here every year? I mean, it was great. Going down to the port at night, it was amazing. Unbelievable. Like in terms of like successful opens, it has to be up there. It was one of the fastest selling with golf is flying in Ireland, uh, all over the country. Uh, obviously then with, Ch- with Shane winning. It was, uh, oh, it was awesome. amazing. Uh, What's the bad for uh, Irish golf as well? How good was it seeing Shane go directly from Port Rush back in? He's drunk. He's got the shirt off. His caddy's drunker than he is. I mean, <laughs> can you imagine being – I mean, that must have been a, a week-long bender. Oh, 100%. No, I know I know Shane very well. And I know what he's like. And he loves his Guinness. And I'd say that was – I'd say there was Guinness coming out of that Claret jug for a while. Have you, have you had some Guinness out of the Claret jug yet? Shane? No, no. Come on. Yet. But it was good. It, no, it was good for me though, because Shane's from like 25, 30 minutes from where I'm from, yeah. easily. And uh, we, I mean, we pretty much speak the same as well. I people always say that. But um, yeah, he, he uh, it was just amazing to see. I love when there's obviously an Irish winner, and we, to be fair, over the last twenty years, we've had a, a, a lot of major winners yeah, for sure. Um, but to see to see Shane do it, and I, you know, it was one of those players that, and it sounds like a. You know, I said this ages ago, but if for a long time I've been saying that that swing and that short game are way too good not to at least contend at multiple majors. The short game, the short game is—I mean, he can get up and down from underneath your car. It's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke how good it is. It's insane, and just the, how compact the swing is, um, and how smooth it is for 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 you know a big guy is uh, 
he's pretty pretty amazing and um yeah the light for him is amazing um do you think that having people like Shane to look up to obviously when you were younger you were looking up to golfers I mean it's got to do amazing things for golf in Ireland to have all these great you know Padraig all these great players you know mm. Rory and, and Darren from Northern Ireland but you know to now have another one I mean it's 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 the coolest thing it's huge I mean I can imagine like, I think of myself um when I was 12 and joining the golf club and and playing my first summer of golf and playing the Tuesday and Thursday tournaments on my summer holidays. And I'm just thinking, when he won that, I was, when Shane won the Open, I was thinking, imagine like being, if when I was 12 and a guy from 30 minutes down the street won a major, won the Open, not just like yeah. any, any tournament, won the Open. Um, and I was just thinking about all those 12-year-olds now in all those like small little clubs around the country, just thinking, that could be me. And yeah. I, 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 that's what I, and Shane, by the way, and Shane knows that. Shane, knows, <laughs> Shane, no, but Shane, like he res, really respects junior golf and and um, loves the small club nature. Still, probably goes back and plays at his old. Oh, club for all sure. Time. Um, he's got a place. I mean, he's been over here for the lockdown. He's he's over, you know, not far from me with our boy Stephen Grant, and um, you mm -hmm. know, uh, golf courses here today just opened up. So I think guys are going to start to get out and start playing. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, um, it'll be interesting to see. Um, who's the best musician golfer you've played with? Timberlake's pretty decent. Yeah, JT's pretty good. Yeah, he is. He's, um, he's pretty solid. He has his off days like we all do as amateur golfers, but he hits it smooth. He can put well. Um, yeah, he gets very, he's very, uh, he gets very frustrated with himself. Let's just say that. Um, it was one. Time, it was one time we played a game, and he he played. We played one day. He was fine. The next day, he just lipped out from everywhere. The ball was just going around, <laughs> doing three sixties around the hole. We started calling him Justin Timberlips. <laughs> uh, he he's just he's a great guy too. Great guy. He loves his golf. Just yeah, just a dude. Yeah, he's he's probably the most solid. And there's so many people. I mean, the celeb crowd in LA. I mean, there's so many guys at Lakeside. There's yeah. so many guys over at uh, Bel Air and all the good mm -hmm. courses. I mean, you're spoiled for choice out there. Yeah, I know. It's pretty sweet. Obviously, some of the courses, will, you know, unless you know someone, you can't get in. But, um, but they're definitely, like, I've been lucky enough to get to know a lot of lads. And even the public courses in, in California are great. It's always dry. You know, it's 75 all year round. You can get out and have a knock. And, um, yeah, spoiled for choice. Some, but there's always someone around to play with. Um, yeah, it's... it's I've become, I've definitely become a fair weather golfer. Uh, people always say, you must be unbelievable at Lynx golf growing up in Ireland. No, You're not playing yeah. golf if it's raining. No, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so the new, the new record, the new tour, I mean, you, um, mm -hmm. you've, I've been watching, uh, no joke, I've been watching you on Instagram at night and you've been saying yeah. the writing process. Um, what's more difficult, writing songs or trying to play good golf? Uh, definitely golf. It's the hardest thing in the world. Oh god. Um, I to be fair, I always kind of. I'm not sure if I even want to be like a two, you know, a scratch. What's the either. What's the current handicap? I play off play off nine. Oh, that's... Um, which is kind of nearly good enough for me because I can solidly play to about that. And I just always, when I was younger, I always just wanted to get to a level where I could go out, have a few beers, enjoy it with the lads, have a bit of a laugh, and it become just you know, a hobby that I can be good enough at for the rest of my life. I don't really want to shoot. Well, I would love to shoot the lights out of it, but I just hate, I hate when I play bad. But, you know, luckily enough, I've gotten to the point now where there's more better rounds than bad ones. And, and yeah. that's where I'm at. But in terms of the writing songs, it's a, it's a completely different kettle of fish. Although they, they do, when I, I say when I write the songs, it never happens the same twice. And I could definitely say that about cuss. <laughs> <laughs> so what type of... Um, when you're writing songs, do you do it? Do you sit down and specifically say, "Okay, I'm going to write songs today," or do you? Are you taking notes? Are you putting stuff in your phone? I mean, how does it? How does it happen? Yeah, I do a lot of. I'm one of the ones. I'm not sure if it happens a lot really, um, of late, but I'm one of those people that writes. There's a lot of. I have a lot of like little brown books everywhere, <laughs> little little letter bound books, and uh, do a lot of like writing little stories in it, and <clears throat> just to kind of help me when I go to sit down, and then we like if. I've got lists of stuff, titles, little words that might, you know, kick off something else in my brain, uh, stories, as I say. And then when I go to sit down and I start playing, oh, have you lost me? No, I can still hear you. Oh, oh, I look terrible, though. That's... <laughs>
Hold on. Let me let me send. Let me uh, call call you back. All right. Now call me back, even. All right. We will. Oh, it's frozen. It's frozen. Okay, let's close down the app and call me back in a sec. All right. We're gonna we're gonna leave, uh, is it back. So we're gonna try and see if we can get him back real quick. Where is he? Put me on there. Where is he? Let's see. We'll try and find him. This there he is. We'll get him back. There we go. I don't know what happened. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, and then when I go to sit and, and write a song, you know, I can, I can be like, it makes me think of that or that story that I wrote down, and then I look at it and I'll be able to actually potentially pull lines from that simple story that I've just written. Or, yeah, it just kind of comes as you go. You're like, oh, this reminds me of that, or this kind of vibe. It's not like I've written a story about going on a night out and right. I've just gone... Oh right, let's write a ballad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Each each mem each memory or story's got, you know, a feeling to it and that's how I kinda of write. I do a lot of like playing four four chords in a row and then kind of start just singing random blah 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 over it and then fingers crossed that stuff that comes out of my mouth is pretty decent. Yeah, I was talking with Brooks yesterday and we were talking about the things that we miss on tour and a lot of you know, I think what we miss about being on the PGA tour is the people that you see, I mean, you've got your band and stuff. I mean, has it been hard? I mean, have you missed not like seeing your boys and, and your crew every day? Yeah, I, w I would have been. And I actually, as, as we said at the start, I would have been on tour right now uh, with all that crew. And we'd, and we'd had done a month long of rehearsals with the whole team and everyone was getting ready. Production, all the gear. We were just about to see the stage for the first time. Uh, <clears throat> the lighting and all that stuff. And my band where everyone was so excited because we were just going to tour from now until uh, like the first week of December. So that was me, right. you know, that was us for the year going around all over the country, all, all over the world on buses and planes and the, the excitement of that. And then to be told to get a call then and say, we're actually canceling the whole thing because this is more serious than we thought it was quite upsetting. I'm not going to lie. And you obviously feel for the the thousands of people who, buy tickets and wait so long to see right. the show and now they're n probably not going to see it but next year and also there's a on, from my side of things it's, it, it could be a, a good thing maybe potentially I'm going to write a lot of songs now and maybe I'll come across an even bigger song than I had previously I, we don't know but maybe I will and then maybe the tour will be bigger and better next time and yeah you can look at it from that end but how much shame. what is the biggest single difference when you tour now on your own versus back when you were with One Direction and, and you tour. Cause I actually, no joke, I, we took my daughter six, uh, you know, Miami, you know, you're at the big stadium. I mean, I couldn't hear a word, word you were singing. It was just screaming. <laughs> How different is it now versus back then? Yeah. Um, in terms of all of that, it's a lot quieter. <laughs> um, <laughs> the way I would look at it is, I think, I think the, the fans we were uh, again, we were kind of like the similar, a similar age to a lot of our fans, or you know, within five or six years either side. I would have said, um, and yeah, it was obviously that's what you know, that's what happens in fandoms and and things like that. But I'd say that we were just, because we we're of a similar age, they've kind of grown with us now, and um, yeah, my gigs are a lot quieter. Um, I can go a lot more places than I could before uh, in terms of getting around. Um, can you can you go out to dinner and, and just like have a normal dinner? Uh, sometimes. I'm not going to say yes if we, because not all the time, but I try my best. Like um, there's a lot of hat wearing and um, and things like that. Um, but I mean, definitely got it's definitely gotten a lot easier. But when I you know when when when, I, when we were when I was younger, it was it was nuts. Yeah. We've everybody, obviously, I'm looking at all the people asking questions. Everybody's asking one direction reunion. <laughs> I get asked this quite a lot, like, so I've got, <laughs> I've got a good answer coming here. Uh, <laughs> I know, um, no, just um, there's been obviously there's a lot of talk about it at the moment because it's like a 10 year, uh, the 10 year anniversary of the band getting together is happening this, this year. Um, Can you believe it's been 10 years? Does it seem like it's been 10 years or does it seem like it's more? 
No, absolutely not. No, it's strange. It's just like, it's, I don't know. It feels like, sometimes it feels like it was yesterday. Other times it feels like it was 50 years ago. It's, it's strange. Um, but yeah, there's been a lot to talk about. But no, there's no, there's no reunion as, as, as such. Um, we've, yeah, we've just been talking a little bit more recently. Yeah. yeah. What do you miss the most about those days? Probably the madness, actually. <laughs> uh, you, you miss, like, uh, we're, we're one of very few people that has seen hysteria and madness like that. Oh. So, I mean, when you have it and then you don't have it for a second, you're a bit like, oh. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess, like, I mean, everyone's dream is to play to the stadiums. I mean, you've seen it. It's, it's just like, can you imagine what that looks like standing out? I can't stadium, even begin to imagine what that was like. We were not far from the stage. It was in Miami where they played the Super Bowl. That's and right, they, the they, yeah. yeah, they turned the stage kind of lengthwise in the middle of the mm -hmm. stadium. And I couldn't, I couldn't hear anything. You were playing the guitar. And I was like, I couldn't hear the guitar. <laughs> so now I know for the last 10 years, no one's heard a word I've sung or played. <laughs> <laughs> so did you did you ever get to a point I was I was saying I was thinking because you couldn't hear anything you could have a bad night and it wouldn't make a difference <laughs> I don't know I hope not I hope we were uh, successful for some reason but uh, I mean it was just so fun you know the tunes were good uh, and all that and yeah just got to do things that not a lot of people get to do do you ever sing the old songs quietly by yourself sometimes if I like It'll come on like in the car, but I, and I won't turn it off. I, I'll, I'll leave it under. Some, especially that last album we did was an absolute cracker of an album. Yeah. Um, and yeah, some, sometimes, yeah, you get one. I don't like when people, like sometimes I go to restaurants or something or I'll go to bars or whatever and the, the DJ or the owner of the bar thinks they're funny and they'll put like a tune on. <laughs> and then the whole place is looking at me, uh, <laughs> which isn't great. But yeah. Um, but you can't win every week, Claude. You can't win every yeah. week. Well, we've taken up enough of your time. It's great to talk to you. Stay safe. Hopefully we'll uh, see you again soon. And um, hey, keep your shirt off. I'll, I'll, I'll keep watching. Oh. <laughs> Claude, uh, you're an absolute gent. Say hello to your dad. And I'll see you soon.